going on guys? Listen, I'm not your regular guy, all right? I'm your motivation guy, that's right. I'm here to motivate you, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I wanna talk to you about being focused. Listen, in order to be the best, not only in this game, but also in life, you have to be focused. You know, some of the top pros in the world are because they're the most focused. And I wanna encourage you, man, there's gonna be so many distractions that are gonna come your way, you know, that are gonna try to get you from, from you know, taking your attention from the thing that you should be doing. So keep grinding, keep practicing, and, and go after your goals. Don't let anything stop you or get in your way. Stay focused. So finally after a year, you know, the Fortnite's rise to fame, Epic has made changes that have given controller players an even playing field when it comes to cross-platform. I mean, we used to see all the time, you know, uh, keyboard and mouse players dominating in competitive. But now, time and time again, we're now starting to see insanely talented controller players. I mean, guys like Faceway, guys like Unknown, uh, Furious RR, you know, Captain Shark, and so much more. I mean, these guys are showing off their mechanics. They're dominating now in these Fortnite events and tournaments, showing off their aiming, showing off their building, and showing off, you know, what they got. And most of these are thanks to their perfect sensitivities, key binds, and dead zones, which are only perfect for them. That's right, guys. Like, these settings were designed and crafted for these specific players and their play styles, which basically means that you can't just copy one of their sensitivities and expect to play nearly as good as them. Luckily for you, though, in this video today, we're going to be showing you guys how you can evolve your skills by fine-tuning your settings and keybinds to be perfect just for you. All right, guys, it's time to get hyped right now. You guys ready? It's time to sit back, come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. If only I had some more. It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. You guys got some more you can give me? Also, if you want to learn and play exactly like the pro players, such as Unknown and Scope, check out ProGuys.com, where we have the best coaches in the world. Okay, you guys got to sign up for our membership today and get exclusive access to master courses by players like Benji and Mongrel. If you want to go more in depth and explore all the different aspects of competitive gameplay that you need to know in order to succeed, head on over to ProGuys' website and be sure to sign up and start improving rapidly today. You know, just as the great mathematicians say, you always go by the order of operations or you won't succeed. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in order to start finding the perfect sensitivity settings, right? There's a special order that you need to follow, guys, in order to find the right sensitivities. And you know, not just for your aiming, but also for your editing, for your building and your dead zones. Okay, guys, so let's get into the first step, finding the perfect sensitivity for your aim. Controller players have been notorious for having incredible aim, but aim assist alone is not gonna give you this. You have to have the right horizontal and the right vertical sensitivity, you know, as well as a perfect ADS sensitivity. And this is the first step to our order. Okay guys, so to begin, we're gonna take a popular sensitivity used by the majority of controller pros and go ahead and just plug this into our horizontal and vertical sensitivity. This sensitivity is 42% for both horizontal and vertical, got it? As for your input curve, you should use linear, as linear is just a much more, you know, broadly used sensitivity input for every good reason. You know, although Unknown Army is considered one of the best controller players and he happens to play on Exponential, if we take a look at the majority of pro controller players who are consistent, you know, when it comes to competitions and events, every single one of those guys plays on linear. So it's just really safe to say that this is the more consistent aiming method for a wider, you know, variety of people. Why, you may ask? Good question. Because linear has much more instantaneous response curve, making it an incredibly fast input that almost feels like <laughs> you're getting better response time because of that. You know, exponential only works for those who have already mastered their aim and, you know, they'd rather just stick to it rather than changing it up. But for the vast majority of you who are watching this video, if you haven't already, making this switch is definitely worth it. Now, once you've set your sensitivity to 42%, go ahead and set your ADS to 0.10. Now you're gonna test this sensitivity and see how it feels for you. So go ahead and just load up a Fortnite creative lobby and then turn around and walk up to where you see matchmaking test. On the left-hand side, you should see a Zone Wars option. Go ahead and just queue up for this and just play five rounds of the Zone Wars. Here are some things that will tell you how you need to adjust your aim. If you feel like your aim is constantly dragging behind, and not moving to where you needed to, you know, be fast enough. You need to increase your horizontal and vertical sensitivity. The same goes for, you know, if you're holding the left trigger, but this time, adjust your ADS. This is by far, like, one of the best ways to test your aim. 
as it is both, you know, realistic and it includes player movements and aim assist, as well as real and in-game situations. By using this method, you should be able to find the perfect sensitivity that you're comfortable aiming on. Okay guys, now let's get into the second step in our order of operations. Ladies and gentlemen, building. So your building sensitivity is without a doubt another very important aspect of your gameplay. It's what will aid you in your defensive maneuvers and your high ground retakes and build fights. Using building effectively is so important, man. Like, But in order to do this, you need a sensitivity that's just right for you. So once you found your perfect aiming sensitivity, you're going to start tuning your building sensitivity. Okay guys, so to start, I want you to jump into a creative lobby and just go into your world where you, know, you have lots of room to free build. The best way to find your perfect building you know, multiplier for the building sensitivity is by performing free builds and high ground retakes that you've mastered before deciding to switch your sensitivity. This could be anything from 90s you know, to advanced retakes that you've spent countless time on performing and practicing. The reason we're doing this is because these moves are the ones that you know from muscle memory, so performing them shouldn't be a problem for you unless you know, your building sensitivity isn't something that you're comfortable on. You know, as you're building and performing your favorite building maneuvers, see if you're overturning or just losing control. This can mean that your building sensitivity is too high. So if that's the case, consider just turning down your building multiplier, right? While at the same time, you know, if it feels too dragged down and slow, just increase it. To take this like a step further, consider the play style that you enjoy watching and playing in. Do you prefer fast, you know, flicky building like face way or more slow and smooth building like Razor X? Take this into consideration as well before choosing your building sensitivity. If you find that you like faster building, but you're not as comfortable on it as you should be, you can consider just staying on the higher sensitivity and just mastering the muscle memory for it due to the fact that, you know, it caters best to your playstyle. And we all know that building isn't complete without editing. Oh, man. So let's head on over to our editing sensitivity, which is the second to last part of our order of operations. All right, guys, so the editing sensitivity is so important, you know, for multiple, you know, different reasons, obviously, right? First and foremost, like, it's responsible for many of the plays that you're going to make that will follow up with, you know, dealing or even taking damage. So there's a few things you'll need to keep in mind as you try your best to find your perfect editing multiplier. So to begin, you got to load up in a creative lobby and place a wall and a ramp on two separate areas. These are the two main pieces that you're going to be using to find the perfect sensitivity, as these are the majority of the edits that you're going to be performing in game, right? So now start by performing basic edits such as, you know, corner piece edits and side opening edits on the wall piece. So there's two things that you need to look for. First, you got to make sure you're not losing control during or after your edit is complete. What this could look like is your crosshairs being too far from the general area where your opponent is, or your crosshair not being on the build at all. If this is the case, definitely consider lowering your editing sensitivity. Okay, so the next thing to look out for is slow editing speeds that don't allow you to go into edit mode and confirm an edit in under a second. You should be able to perform all the editing maneuvers very quickly, almost like instantaneous. So play around with your multiplier until you find the perfect sense. Also, you gotta be sure to practice and test ramp edits and ramp flipping alongside the wall edits. And for the final aspect of our order of operations, okay, we gotta perfect your dead zones. So dead zones were created with the purpose of eliminating controllers just stick drift. But having too high of dead zones will create issues such as a lack of response time and slower input overall. So what this means is that you want your dead zones to be as low as possible without any, you know, stick drift. Stick drift can be detrimental and, and can really impact your gameplay and annoy you <laughs> as, you know, it'll cause unnecessary movements and turning. So the way you find the right dead zones is by setting your, both your analog stick dead zones to 0.05 and then moving your analog sticks in multiple directions and then setting your controller down and seeing if there's any movement. If there is, increase the dead zones by 0.02, you know, until you stop getting movement. Then see if you can reduce it by, you know, 0.01. If you can without any movement, you know, you found the best dead zones, all right? If you can't, just go ahead and increase it by 0.01 again. And then you found the best dead zones. Okay, so now that we've covered your controller sensitivity values, let's go over keybinds and the importance of having good keybinds on your controller. When it comes to keybinds, guys, there are some, you know, givens and some basics that every player should be following. The first and, you know, really most obvious is Builder Pro. So, you know, Builder Pro should be used by all controller players who want to be competitive and advanced. If you're not on it, the chances of you being at the top are extremely small. The mechanics and placement for builds are very good on Builder Pro, and there is no other building setting as good. 
But it doesn't really stop here. Like in order to get them, you know, perfect for fast edits and other important aspects of pro controller gameplay, you'll need to make some custom changes. So going over and head down to the custom section in your controller keybind section, the main thing that we're gonna be changing is your editing button as well as the confirm and reset. There's a few different options that you can choose from, and these options are gonna rely on whichever one you're most comfortable with. Things like, you know, whether or not you wanna play claw, or, you know, the way you grip and, and hold your controller will determine this as well. So go ahead and just attempt all of them to see which ones feels the best to you. Keep in mind, guys, that you're not gonna be editing like a god on any of these, like right off the bat. You're only seeing which one you're most comfortable with in order to like really spend more time just improving and getting better at it. So guys, remember, remember, remember <laughs> that the goal is fast and effective long-term gains. Don't worry about the short term. If you keep messing up, man, just keep practicing, keep going. For the first option, go ahead and set your edit bind to left analog stick click, your confirm and switch mode on B, and your reset on right analog stick. The second option is edit on Y. Pickaxe and left analog stick, confirm and edit on left trigger, and reset edit on right analog stick. For the third and final option, this is for players on paddles. Go ahead and set your edit to left D-pad and your confirm to right D-pad. Then bind these to your left and right paddles for two paddles. Keep your reset as right analog stick. Go ahead and then just test these out and just see which ones you're most comfortable on. Also guys, if you're on paddles, do not be afraid to try out the first two options. You know, you might just be more comfortable without paddles than you are with, you never know. Especially if you play claw. All right, guys, once again, this is not your ordinary guy. No, 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 this is your motivation guy. I'm here to motivate you. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta. We got so much coming out. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment down below what you guys thought and what you would like to see next. We strive to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking this video. Subscribe to the channel, guys, and show ProGuys.com some love by using code ProGuys in the item shop. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you soon.